Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a one-sample Kolmogorov Smirnoff test in SPSS. The Kolmogorov Smirnoff test is also known as the KS test, and it's used to compare and observe cumulative distribution function for a variable with a specified theoretical distribution. There are four theoretical distributions to choose from, normal, uniform, Poisson and exponential. So I have a set of fictitious data here in the data view in SPSS and I have an ID variable and a program variable but of interest for this demonstration are going to be the five variables here. We have functioning, severity index, and motivation and then two variables I created specifically to demonstrate how the KS test works uniform and exponential. So to conduct a KS test we go into analyze and then non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then one sample KS. This is one sample Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. And this is what the dialogue for the one sample KS test looks like by default. And you can see that of the variables I mentioned that were going to be used in this demonstration, one of them is ordinal motivation. So I'm going to hold down control and select the five variables, move them over to the test variable list box here. Under options, I'm going to add descriptive statistics and quartiles. Press continue. And you can see under test distribution, there are four possible test distributions, normal, uniform, Poisson, and exponential. I'm going to check them all off, get rid of all four. So these variables distribution functions are going to be compared with all four of these test distributions. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and run the one sample KS test. I'll click OK. And you can see it starts off with descriptive statistics. In terms of sample size, I had 45 of both severity and, and functioning, and 100 for motivation and uniform, and then 90 for exponential. The means for all five of these variables are provided, and the standard deviations, and then the minimum and maximum values, as well as the quartiles. We have the 25th, the 50th, which is also the median, and the 75th. Because I checked off all four test distributions, we're going to have four tables like this. One sample KS test. You can see this first one is testing the normal distribution. And you can see we have normal parameters, mean and standard deviation. And then we have most extreme differences. And you have positive, the most extreme positive difference, the most extreme negative difference, and then the most extreme absolute difference. And these differences are in comparison with the test distribution of interest, which in this case is the normal distribution. So the way we would interpret this significance level here at the, the bottom is the null hypothesis in this case is that the functioning variable distribution does follow the normal distribution. So with a result of 0.176, which is a non-statistically significant result, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and we would say that functioning is normal. 0.2 for severity, again functioning normal. Motivation, we have a statistically significant result. It is less than 0 0.05. So we'll say motivation does not follow a normal distribution. We reject the null hypothesis there. We fail to reject it for the uniform variable and we reject it for the exponential variable. In a similar way we compare these variables distributions to the other test distributions uniform, Poisson, and exponential. You can see for uniform, functioning, and severity, 
would both be considered to follow the uniform distribution, motivation, exponential would not, and of course the uniform variable that I set up uh, does follow the uniform distribution. For the Poisson distribution, severity, uniform, exponential do not follow the Poisson distribution, and functioning and motivation do. And then for the last table we have the exponential distribution. As you can see in this case, functioning, severity, motivation, uniform, none of those variables follow the exponential distribution. They all have statistically significant p-values here. The exponential variable has a non-statistically significant result, 0.299, so we would say that it does follow the exponential distribution. So I want to graph both the uniform and exponential variables to show you what an example of those distributions could look like. So I'm going to go to Graphs and Chart Builder, and I'm going to go to Histogram, and it, with the uh, first histogram here on the left, which is called a simple histogram, I'm going to drag that into this box here. And first I'll show you the uniform variable, so I'm just going to drag that down to the x-axis. So it's all set up here, I'll click OK. This is an example of what a uniform distribution uh, may look like. And you can see it's kind of flat uh, with some deviations from that. That's kind of what we expect for a uniform distribution. And then taking a look at the exponential variable, I'm going to open up uh, the same dialog here, the chart builder, and I'm just going to replace uniform with exponential by dragging exponential down to the x-axis and I'm gonna click OK and here's an example of what an exponential distribution could look like. Notice that there's high frequencies in these lower values and then as we move to higher values the frequencies drop. I hope you found this video of using a one sample KS test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.